I hope you are having a lovely start to the new year. I took a little bit of time off of social media over the holidays, which was really lovely. As somebody who has worked in social media for years, it's always hard, but it feels really nice when you can do it. So I'm really glad that I took that time to just unplug a little bit. I thought that it would be lovely for us to go through some of my thoughts for the new year and just wishes and hopes and dreams for the new year. For 2024, I decided this year to make a list of ins and outs and also write down a few words that feel like I really would love to embrace those words in this new year. I know a lot of people do like one specific word, like in a word of intention. One word didn't feel like it quite summed everything up that I am, am hoping for the new year. So in case you haven't seen this ins and outs trend, there's a lot of different ways to do it, which is why I kind of have liked it a little bit more these last like year or two uh, over doing specific goals. It's just sort of like what I want to embrace more of in the new year and what I'd like to do like maybe less of. And they should be like totally personal to you. I Obviously the ideas of ins and outs, I feel like growing up, especially in like the early 2000s, like you would always hear that about like, you know, fashion and style or like what's in, what's out. More than anything, I feel like people are starting to embrace them as like very personal things. Like it's not about, you know, what anyone else is doing. It's just about what you want and how you feel. I don't have a super long list of either, but I just wanted to focus on, you know, little things. You can always build it out sort of as you go throughout the year, which I think is also really important. We tend to set goals and intentions like just at the beginning of the year. And a lot of us, myself included, tend to not sort of re-engage with those like look back on the like are they still making sense after a couple of months like are they still things that are important to us more so my intention than anything this year is to give myself that space to really you know reassess as the year goes on without further ado let's dive in okay so my ins for 2024 my first one is quiet time, which is so funny because I didn't even realize when I grabbed this mug that inside it literally says quiet time. I got this at Anthropology a few months ago and I just, I loved the little puppy on the front. Yeah, I did love that it said quiet time. I thought that was really cute and I didn't really think about it. And I certainly didn't think about it when I was writing this down and I didn't think about it when I grabbed this mug to use today, but clearly it's been something that's been seeping into my subconscious because lately I've been really thinking about the idea of quiet time. At least for me growing up, I remember it was really common when we were kids to be told like, okay, it's quiet time and this will be the time of day where like, we're not turning on the TV and you're just kind of, you can play quietly or you could read a book. And I've been thinking lately that as an adult, I feel like some days go by where I'm just like trying to pack as much into a day as possible. And at the same time, you know, in order to kind of get through a lot of stuff, I'll often have like a podcast or an audiobook or, you know, the TV playing in the background. I'm very grateful for those things. Don't get me wrong. Cooking, like I love to put on my audiobook then and I, love it. I think it's actually really beneficial to me. But at the same time, I think some days go by where I'm like, did I ever like take five minutes to just not look at my phone, not listen to anything, not, not be like surrounded by noise? Did I just take five or 10 minutes to like be quiet? Before 2020, I had gotten into a really good rhythm with, you know, practicing meditation. That was really great for me. Quiet time is sort of like meditation. I just spend five minutes just with myself, just, just not taking in content, just giving myself that moment to just breathe and think or pay attention to my thoughts a little bit more. That is my thought with quiet time. So that's my big, I'd say my big in for 2024 is that I want to practice quiet time. So my next one is tea, which I'm a big coffee drinker. I love coffee, but I love the idea of maybe swapping out my coffee for decaf tea specifically a few times a day, like, or, you know, swapping to decaf tea in the afternoon. I 
I definitely have gotten into a bad habit of just drinking coffee like basically all morning into the afternoon until like usually around two or three I try to cut myself off so that it doesn't you know keep me up. I would love to start swapping you know my coffee for for tea or you know, after lunch instead and not be so reliant on that afternoon coffee. And also I think that there is something so extra like indulgent and cozy and comforting to have like a cup of chamomile or you know another decaf tea you know right before bed especially if you can like read a book while you do it I, whenever i do it i am always so glad it like brings me such comfort and i'd love to practice that a little bit more in 2024. my next in is writing and specifically journaling i have been a journaler like most of my life but I definitely fall in and out of habit with it and so sometimes I'll I'll journal for a week straight and then I won't touch it for a month. I'd love to get back to journaling just on you know um, multiple times a week like it doesn't necessarily have to be every single day but like even just you know four or five times a week would be great so therapeutic and also i think having that ability to look back on the past in that way is just so important so i'd really like to get myself back into that habit reading which i feel like it's always on my list i have always been a big reader so this is nothing new but i definitely want to replace scrolling with reading this year i feel like i fall in and out of habits with that and I feel like especially this fall i noticed myself scrolling before bed a lot more than I, I'd like to. So the last few months I've already feel like I've gotten back into a better habit with reading instead before bed and I love having my Kindle for this because I you know I'm able to like lay down and really like relax and get myself ready to bed and you know just read a few pages even. So definitely want to continue prioritizing reading over scrolling especially. All right another in for 2024 is optimism <laughs> and maybe this sounds like such a weird in for 2024 i don't know but i wouldn't necessarily say i am a pessimist but i'm not a natural optimist i sort of tend to fall somewhere in the middle i guess i'm just more of a cautious thinker like i don't want to get my hopes up a lot of times but like over the years i found that like it, my life would be a lot better if I were a little bit more naturally optimistic. But for me, it's definitely something that I have to work on. And there's been, you know, in years past, I focused on that a little bit more. I, once again, I think before 2020, practicing optimism was something that I did and it definitely really benefited my life. And then obviously 2020 hit and just the last few years, I've really struggled to get back to that same mental space that I was in like 2019. So I would really love to sort of recommit myself to finding optimism in 2024. Another in for 2024 is delayed gratification. So that's, you know, not buying something as soon as I see it online. Even the practice of delayed gratification when it comes to like saying something to somebody. So like recently I had an experience where somebody had said something that hurt my feelings. They didn't mean to and I, I knew that even at the time, but it, it really hurt me and I had a lot of thoughts about it and I really thought about just firing off a text back at them and like telling them how I felt. I ended up writing out like this text in my notes app. It's essentially like the, the, you know, write a letter, put it in your drawer sort of a thing. So I did that in the notes app of my phone and part of my brain was like, send it, send it now, like send it. And I was like, no, like if I can't wait until tomorrow morning, there's something wrong. Like, and I made myself wait until the next day. And I'm so glad that I did because I ended up not ever sending that text. I'm grateful that I didn't because I don't think it was necessary. Sometimes you just need to give yourself some space. And to me, that's almost maybe not the exact same as delayed gratification, but sort of in the same vein of like, I think part of you wants that gratification of like sending off a text and responding to something instantaneously, just telling yourself you have to wait even with that. I think, it, at least for me, I think it's something that I really need to practice. And along the same thought is another in is patience. Another thing that I'm working on, I feel like those all sort of work together and they're, they're similar. Those two I think are just important things that I would like to continue to try to learn to do better in 2024. 
my outs for 2024, number one is overthinking. I tend to do it about everything. It's very hard to not overthink things, but at the same time, I think I just need to keep practicing it. So we're not gonna overthink every little thing anymore. That's, we're gonna try. The second one is following creativity. So as a creative person, I tend to find myself, you know, going through dips of creativity where I'm super creative and then I feel like I don't have anything to do and I can't figure out what to do. And so I'd really love to just practice being creative even in those dips where I feel like I don't have anything you know coming to me immediately not necessarily pushing myself like sometimes you do just need a rest but I think sometimes too it just I start to feel a panic and so I just end up not doing anything sort of pushing through and working through that so we're not gonna just wait for creativity we're gonna we're gonna work with it we're gonna nurture it scrolling aimlessly as another out. I feel like that's on everyone's list. We're all trying to do it, right? Another out, which, you know, kind of connects back to our ins, is impulse purchases. I really want to limit my impulse purchases. And the last out for 2024 is pressure-filled goals. So like those big goals that are sort of like, I want to get 100,000 followers by June. Just would like to stop putting those types of goals on my list and instead focus more on things that I know will bring me a lot more joy. So I think you know, you can put on your list like, oh, I want to have 100,000 followers on Instagram, you know, by next month. But like, that won't necessarily change your life that much. It sounds like it will, but you know, I know from my experience and I know from other people that it doesn't necessarily change your situation all that much. So I would like to leave those sort of pressure filled goals behind and instead focus on setting goals that are going to actually add value to my life and hopefully to other people's lives who are around me too. So that is it for the ins and outs. As far as my words, my biggest word for this year is brave. I am naturally a big old chicken. I have found especially like as I get older, like, you know, fear really creeps up on me. And I, I have that overthinking where I can think about all of the things that might go wrong if I do something, which I've especially learned about myself from roller skating. <laughs> which is something that I started to do in 2023. I just found that I'm so cautious, I'm so scared, and yes, there are good reasons to be scared. Like, I actually did get injured roller skating in this past year. That was scary for a lot of reasons. But at the same time, I know that I could stop roller skating, stop doing anything, you know, dangerous, and I could still get incredibly hurt walking down the street. Like I have actually in years past fallen down our own stairs by accident and really hurt myself. So just because I'm not doing something quote unquote dangerous does not mean that I'm gonna be safe. And you know, with that in mind, I'd really love to embrace being brave. So one of my other words, which is the pair of words, is boundless creativity. I don't necessarily know if I need to like explain that a lot, but you know, I just wanna feel like I'm embracing my creativity a lot more. These two also kind of go together, but I have them separate. So peace and contented. So I just really wanna embrace feeling at peace and happy and not just constantly searching for the next thing. And my last word is growth. And I think that goes hand in hand a little bit with being brave because I think oftentimes in order to grow, you really have to be a little bit brave. And I know that there's certain things in my life and my business I'd love to be better at and I'd love to learn more of. But in order to do that, a lot of times I have to break through the fear of learning something new and doing something that I'm not comfortable with. Those are the big words of 2024. Okay, so last thing before we go, I wanted to really quickly run through my TBR list for 2024. I made myself go through my bookshelf <laughs> and look at all the books that I already own, most of which I've thrifted or I've been gifted and look at ones, especially ones that have been sitting there for years that I really want to read, but I still haven't. So I'm not going to go into depth on what all of these are, but I will leave the list below. And this is my quick TBR list for 2024. Victor Frankl's The Man's Search for Meaning, Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka, Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Probably not. Bird by Bird by Anne Lamont. Factfulness by Hans Rosling, which I started this like two years ago and only got about a quarter of the way through and didn't finish, but I liked it. I just never finished it. Ghosts by Edith Wharton. 
A Whispering in the Dark by Louisa May Alcott, The Innocence by Francesca Segal, Quiet by Susan Cain, and finally, Keep Moving by Dick Van Dyke. I would absolutely love to hear your ins and outs for 2024 or some of the things that are on your TBR list for 2024. I always love to hear what people are reading. So definitely leave that below. Anyway, I hope you are having a lovely day and I will see you next time.